like my stuff. You like your stuff. We like to keep our stuff when we travel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Make sure you watch to the end for two pieces of advice that would have saved me from having my purse with everything in it stolen in Peru. Nothing against Peru, it was 100% my fault. But if you watch this video, it won't happen to you. First up, assuming that you're planning a trip, you're going to wanna to take the right stuff with you. Here are some things to look for. Number one, anti-theft bags. I have other videos in this series and on my channel that I will link to in the description that feature a whole series of anti-theft bags, backpacks, purses, slings, wallets, luggage, and more. And yes, I have owned it all and I continue to use it all. But here are some specific features to look for in anti-theft gear that are important. First up, slash proof material. So I'll use this bag as an example for the next few uh, pointers. And this is made by PackSafe. It's a convertible backpack and it also it's convertible because it's also a purse depending on what your needs are. And this material, unbeknownst to anyone who's looking at it, is actually slash proof. Now what that means is there's a mesh that is woven into the fabric of this bag that would prevent anybody from slashing it and getting access in the content. There is a thing that happens if you have a, a bag, it could be a purse or a backpack, this is happened to people that I know, where they're walking through usually a busy marketplace, somewhere where there's lots of people and it might be that you're getting jostled around, and they have had the experience of someone actually slashing the bottom of their bag and emptying the contents without them even knowing that it was happening. So this is why slash proof material is important. It will prevent anybody from slashing it and accessing the contents in that kind of scenario. Also, slash proof material in luggage is great because then again, it would prevent somebody from cutting open your luggage and accessing the contents. The next part of slash proof technology are straps. There's another thing that happens. You could have a purse or even a backpack on. Usually it happens with a purse, something that's hanging off of one shoulder or crossbody. You might be walking along the sidewalk and someone will come up beside you on a scooter or a motorcycle and they can actually slash the strap and grab your bag and make away with it before you have a chance to do anything about it. So that's why slash proof straps are important. Uh, again, these are slash proof. There's a metal, uh, kind of cord in, woven into it that prevents it from being slashed. Now you would think a bag like this with all of this metal weaving and the straps and the material would actually be heavy, but it is surprisingly ultra light. So it doesn't add at all to the weight. It doesn't look like it's an anti-theft anything. It just looks like a normal bag, but it will prevent somebody from accessing it, slashing through it at all. Another thing to look for in anti-theft bags are tamper-proof zippers. I saw a horrifying video at one point of someone using a pen to get into someone's luggage and it's through the zipper that they were able to do this. They could actually open up the entire zipper and open up the bag, uh, even though the zippers were locked, didn't matter because the zipper itself was uh, accessible. So anti-theft bags have tamper-proof zippers where you cannot get into the zipper at any point of weakness. So that's important with the zippers. The next part that's important with zippers, of course, are the actual zipper pulls themselves. Always look for something that can be locked. So with a, an opening wide enough that you can fit a TSA combo lock or even a small paddle lock with a key. So then that way you can prevent anybody from opening the zippers that way. Now, some of these anti-theft bags like this one have a couple of additional features that aren't foolproof, but they're just enough to slow down an opportunistic thief. Most crimes are crimes of opportunity. There are crimes where people find it, it's an easy, quick way to get at somebody's contents. So the more you can slow them down with features of an anti-theft bag, the more effective you'll be. Some of these features include, this bag has these little gigogs that you can actually do to slide the zippers together. Holds the zippers together, so again, if you're in a busy marketplace and someone wants to open up the zipper, they can't quite as easily. The next thing that's kind of interesting that PackSafe features in a lot of their bags is this, and I think they call this the rhubar mechanism. It's kind of a neat little decorative feature, but it has a practical use as well. This little bit slides open, and then these zippers can slide in here, and it shuts. So once again, in this particular configuration as the backpack, it's a little bit odd, but again, no one's gonna get into that. When this is a purse, 
it's actually a really lovely decorative feature as well. And it's not locking at all, but it's just enough that no one is going to be able to get into your bag without a significant amount of effort. Now all of these features take a little bit of practice and it's important to get to know your anti-theft bags before you travel with them because if someone's casing you and they see you futzing and fiddling around with your little anti-theft feature and your zipper pulls and how you're locking them together, well then they've just learned how to lock and unlock that as well. So if they have that little bit more time, they might be able to get at this. So practice using these features at home, practice so that you can actually do it without making it too obvious while you are in public. Last up, this bag and many other anti-theft bags and backpacks has a feature that allows you to wrap the slash proof strap around a fixed object. So right here is the ability to unhook a strap and this also locks. So it locks in such a way that someone who doesn't know what they're doing will not know how to undo the strap. But again, you can unlock it, unhook it, and then you can wrap the strap around a table leg if you're having dinner somewhere or a bed post or whatever you want and then just close it lock it there it's not foolproof because again that doesn't lock you know you don't really have the ability to lock this with an actual paddle lock or combo lock so it's not foolproof but again it will slow someone down Someone who might have been, if you were sitting at a restaurant and the bag was simply sitting at the floor at your feet without having been wrapped around the table leg, they could take it away without you even noticing. But because it's wrapped there, they're not going to be able to get at it. So that's a unique feature that can be very handy and again, slow someone down just enough to find someone else's bag to mess with. After I recorded the first draft of this video, I actually realized I have another PackSafe bag that does have a feature that allows you to wrap your strap around a fixed object like a bedpost or a table leg or whatever it is, and you can lock it. So I wanted to make sure that I showed this to you. This is their pop and lock uh, mechanism. It's on a few of their different uh, bags and backpacks. Uh, this is the Vibe 100 hip pack, which I adore, um, but I talk about that in another video, of course. And what I like about this is you can just twist it, you push and you can open it up, you can wrap it around something, and then you just slide it in, and then you can put a TSA lock through the bottom that would prevent anybody from being able to undo that again. And of course, the straps are slash proof. Another neat anti-theft feature to look for in backpacks would be back entrance access. I don't have an example to show you in this particular case, but what it would be is instead of the backpack being totally accessible from the front, which of course when it's sitting on your back would mean that anyone behind you could access it. Instead, there's a little pocket here at the back that rests right against your back. And that's usually where people keep laptops and whatnot. This would prevent, you would feel it if somebody undid that zipper and started pulling things out of your bag using that access point. So it's another great way to deter people and it's a great anti-theft feature for an anti-theft bag. The next thing you should look for in anything that you were bringing with you on a trip, or frankly even using at home, is RFID protecting wallets and slots. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. This is the same technology that allows you to use your credit card to tap and make payments. It's also built into passports and it's involved in our phones as well. But in this particular case, we're concerned about credit cards and passports because if these, your cards and passports are not protected, then technically somebody with an RFID scanner in their pocket can walk by you while you're in the airport and they can steal all of your information. In the same way that you use your credit card to tap, these people can get your information with an RFID scanner. So the way to protect yourself is with RFID blocking technology. So this comes now in a lot of wallets, it comes in purses, there are often pockets that have special RFID protected spots in there that you would be expected to put individual cards into or your passport into or even your full wallet into. I personally like using as my wallet basically, I use these little tiny slim RFID protecting wallets basically. So this can hold a lot of stuff. I usually hold nine, 10 different cards 
Uh, they might be credit cards or health cards or transit pass cards, whatever the case may be. There's spots in here, in here, in here, right? And you can keep some cash in the middle. The only thing that this doesn't carry are coins, obviously. So the nice thing about this, especially as a woman, is I don't always have the same bag with me all of the time. So as long as the cards that I need are all in here, and this is ultimately my wallet, I can slip this into any bag that I have, regardless of whether or not it has an RFID protecting pocket in it, and I'll know that my technology is protected. Also, because it's ultra slim, it's really easy to fit into a pocket. So this is handy for men and women. And if you have a pair of uh, travel pants that have a secret zippered back pocket, again, this is a great thing to keep in that secret back pocket. Here's another RFID protecting thing that I use all the time at home and abroad, but this is particularly handy on travel days because I use this, this is a, I, I do a whole other video about this bag. So again, I will link to this in the description. Um, and this is called the Crossbody Tech Bag, made by PackSave. And what I do is on, uh, on the inside, it has all these different spots to keep cards, cash, passports, and whatnot, and they're all RFID protecting. So this is a great thing to keep my passport in on travel days. I wear it crossbody. It doesn't look like a passport wallet. It doesn't look like that gee wallet thing that you can hang around your neck. So people aren't gonna really notice it, but it also allows me to very easily access all the things I need, which will include my passport and whatnot. Uh, it's also, when I'm at my destination, very easy for me to put my slim wallet in the front pocket, my phone in the middle, and I have everything that I need in a hands-free way at my destination. And of course, because it's made by PackSafe, it also has slash-proof straps and slash-proof material, and it's made with recycled materials. It's all good, I love PackSafe. So that's another way to keep your passport protected. Now, here is a piece of advice that you probably have never heard before regarding how to carry yourself in an airport and how to protect your passport in an airport. You may notice you probably have done it yourself. I certainly know that I have. When you're standing in line, waiting either to clear security or if you're one of those chumps, and I have been one of these chumps, who gets up and stands in line at the gate before they've even started calling the announcements proceeding. I don't know why I do this, but you know, I have been known to do it. A lot of people, if you look around, people already have their passports out. They're standing in line, sometimes for more than half an hour with their passport and boarding pass in hand. Now, if you remember, I told you a little bit earlier that someone technically could walk by you with an RFID scanner and they could scan your information and your passport has this scannable information. So my hot tip is to keep your passport at all times unless you're actually using it for something. Keep it in an RFID protected spot. That's why I like the crossbody tech because it's sitting right there all the time on my person. It's very easy to pull out when I, as soon as I get to the front of the line at security or my boarding gate. But in the meantime, it's sitting in an RFID protected spot. Next, if you don't have any of these pieces of, you know, any of these special bags and wallets and whatnot that have RFID protection, let's say you have a wallet that you really like using, but it's not RFID blocking, or you have a passport wallet that you like to use or something that you like to keep your passport in, but it also doesn't have this technology, then you can actually buy RFID sleeves. It's almost like tinfoil, like it's just this very, very lightweight sleeve. There are others that are made of paper. They're so thin and unassuming, you wouldn't even believe that it has the technology to block RFID, but indeed it does. And you can get them for passport size, you can get them for card size. So I just have a bunch of these handy in case uh, I need the protection, but I don't have the bag or wallet or pocket or whatever it is that I need that's RFID blocking. All right, we're finished with anti-theft travel gear. Let's move on to the next big topic of this video, cash. Because it's the easiest thing to go missing and you have zero recourse when it's stolen. So how to carry cash and how to protect yourself cash-wise is very important. And using these tips, you will be all the smarter for it. So first up, don't take all your cash with you on an excursion if you can at all avoid it. In some cases, yes, you might have to take everything with you if you're moving from one destination to another. In that case, in the cases where you must have all your cash with you, there's a few different things you can do. First of all, do not keep it all in one place. Spread the cash around. If you're traveling with a travel partner, give some to them so you each are carrying some. 
And then each of you can carry this cash in different places. Have some in your wallet, have some in a, a hidden pocket in one of your bags. Uh, and there's lots of different creative ways to hide cash. I'll probably do another video for this because there's a lot of really creative strategies, but think about places that someone, again, who's like a, a crime of opportunity, they have access to your bag or backpack. What are they going to look for? Well, they're probably not going to look in your dirty laundry bag or they're not going to look in an empty chapstick tube that you can empty out and then roll up some cash and keep it in there. They're not gonna check in, you know, for women, you might have a box of tampons. If one of them isn't, doesn't have a tampon in it, it has cash in it. Uh, so you can get really creative about where you hide your cash so it is protected. So just make sure though that you remember all these places that you hid your cash because it can go missing very easily. And again, once you lose your cash, you've lost your cash. When you are shopping in a market or marketplace, don't keep all your cash in your wallet. I like to keep some bills just in my pocket. So if I know I'm going to a fruit and vegetable market and I'm doing my shopping for the week, or I'm going to a craft market and I know I'm gonna buy a few things, I have some small bills in my pocket ready to make those purchases. That way, if anyone is watching me, they don't know where my wallet is. They only ever see me reach into the pocket that has some cash and some bills in it. So if for whatever reason they pickpocket me, they're not going to get everything or even a lot. Next up, <laughs> you know, if you're busy negotiating for something in a marketplace and you're working really hard to get the price down to something and you finally arrive, you and the vendor arrive at a price that you're both happy with, and then you whip out a wallet and you have stacks and stacks of bills. I don't know, that just doesn't feel very good to me. I'm pretty sure it doesn't feel very good to them either if you have these like overt displays of wealth. Meanwhile, you were haggling like there was no tomorrow. So when you're going out, if you know you're gonna spend money, just put the amount of money that you need in your pocket so then that way no one else knows where the rest of it is. In addition to anti-theft bags and backpacks, there's also anti-theft clothing. And there's a wide range of ways that you can use anti-theft clothing to hide cash. Uh, or even cards or really whatever you want to hide. There's scarves with little pockets in it. There's tank tops that have hidden pockets. There's sleeves that can, you know, attach to your bra or your leg, go around your leg strap. There's of course money belts uh, and various other ways that you can hide cash in your clothes without anyone knowing. Now, here's the trick. Don't access them in public <laughs> because then everybody knows you have it. I remember traveling with someone who had one of these money belts, no problem, and it was just sitting underneath her pants, and, and then she was, I don't know where we were, she went to like a supermarket or something, and she, just, she gets in here and unzips, and she lifts up her shirt and kind of opens up her pants and gets into this money belt. And I'm like, what? What are you doing? She's like, I'm getting some cash for the purchase. I said, why are you showing everybody that you have a money belt? She said, well, it's right against my skin. She said, it doesn't matter if anybody knows I have this. I'm, no one will steal it without my knowing. I'm like, well, fair point. But by virtue of having that money belt on and by virtue of accessing that in public, you have just told someone who's watching you that you have wealth, you have something to hide. And if for whatever reason, they wanted to follow you and get you into a spot where no one's looking, they could rob you of it. So no, they may not be able to pickpocket it in public, but they could try to get it off you in other ways that would be much less pleasant. And listen, we, nobody wants to be a victim of any kind of robbery, especially if it involves any kind of violence. So protect yourself from that possibility by not accessing any of these hidden pockets or anti-theft clothing tips in public. The last tip I have for cash and how to carry it and how to protect yourself with it has to do with the ATM. When you go to an ATM, you're automatically immediately a target for anyone who might be watching the ATM because of course you just got out a bunch of cash. There's no way to hide the fact that you just got a bunch of cash. You just went to an ATM. So the trick is when you leave an ATM, make the money disappear immediately. Don't take time to put it in bags and wallets and definitely don't try to practice what I told you earlier about putting it in different spots. Make the money disappear right away and go to somewhere private like a bathroom stall where you can then take that money and you can put it in dif different spots, the various hiding spots you have for cash. 
It's very important to make sure that you're very judicious, you're quick, you're subtle, and you get in and out and then go to a private's place and hide the cash. Next up, cards, debit cards and credit cards. My top anti-theft travel tip for debit cards and credit cards is don't keep them all in the same place. If you have them all in your wallet and the wallet is stolen, you're out of luck. And the problem is until you get replacement cards, you have no way to pay for anything except possibly with the cash you have, that whatever cash you have that might not have been in that wallet. So what I do when I travel is I have usually two cards in my wallet that I need. Uh, and then I also have a separate pouch in a separate bag from separate from everything else that I have that has a spare credit card and a little bit of cash. By having that in a separate place, if my wallet or purse or day pack got stolen, I have another card that I can use in the meantime until I sort out the mess of having those cards stolen. Also, when it comes to credit cards, not an anti theft travel tip, but definitely an important tip uh, from a financial perspective, make sure that at least one of your credit cards is a Visa or MasterCard. Those are the most widely accepted cards around the world. Uh, other brands like Amex and Diners Club are not as widely accepted, so you might find that if that's the only card you have while you're abroad, you might have some trouble actually paying for stuff with it. Next up, I want to talk about securing stuff in your hotel room or your accommodation. Hotel safes are great, but they are notoriously insecure. Anybody can get into them, including the, the hotel staff. I mean, once actually I locked my stuff in the safe and I couldn't get into it, I didn't have my pin, I forgot my pin. I thought, oh my gosh, that's it, my stuff is gone forever. And I called the hotel staff and uh, they came up and with a special key, they unlocked the safe. So anyone with that special key has access to all of your stuff. And uh, as much as uh, you know, I like generally trusting of the world at large and 99% of humans are fundamentally good and have good intentions, the reality is if someone gets that key and they get into your room, they've got all your stuff. And where are you gonna keep your valuables? In the safe, unless you're me. Here's what I like to do with my valuables in my accommodation. Either even if there is safe or especially if there's not a safe. One of the things that I like to do is I will lock them in my luggage. Now, of course, my luggage is anti-theft luggage, so it's slash-proof material, tamper-proof zippers, so nobody can get into this luggage. So if I take that luggage and I put my valuables in it and then I lock it with a, a TSA lock or a padlock, then nobody can access it. Now, yes, absolutely, if someone got into my room, they could take the luggage, absolutely. But again, if we go on the premise that most crimes are crimes of opportunity, someone who's gonna come into your hotel room to take things are gonna take whatever's laying out visible. So if you leave your laptop out, they could take it. If you leave certain valuables out, they could take it. And if they have a key to the safe, they'll take whatever's in there. But they're probably not gonna leave your room with your luggage because not only is that harder to make a quick getaway with, but if they get caught, that could be problematic. So locking your stuff in your luggage is definitely a good way. Also, again, if you have the, the anti-theft bags and backpacks with that strap, you can wrap around something, that's another way to do it. In this next section about anti-theft travel tips, we're gonna talk about protecting your tech. Let's talk about the phone first. The best way to protect your phone, more and more now, we are doing everything on our phones, right? Our, our banking, secure and insecure transactions are all on our phones. So if someone gets your phone and they can get into your phone, they can get a lot of information. So the first and easiest way to protect your tech and all of your information that sits on your tech is to create a pin for your phone. And set your pin up so that if someone gets your phone and they start trying to enter in pins to find your code after a certain number of attempts the phone locks and in some cases depending on the phone I think you can actually tell the phone to completely erase itself if someone tries too many times to enter in the wrong pin code obviously as well set a pin that is difficult to guess also it's important to protect your passwords don't be that person who use, uses one variation of the same password for everything. It's very easy to protect your passwords with a password manager. I'm a big fan of LastPass. I don't actually know any of my passwords because I just know one master password and it's for LastPass and then all the rest of my passwords are super secure and all of my devices allow me to automatically enter those passwords in so no one can even see me entering in a password and swipe that information. I will put a link in the description for LastPass as well. 
Also, activate the Find My Phone or Find My Device feature for your phone and laptop and tablet, any, any devices that you have. This allows you, if your device is lost or stolen, you have the ability to log into the account on another device and you can see where it is in that moment. Uh, a lot of these programs also have what's known as a remote erase feature. So if you're confident that it's been stolen, you can't access it, you can't get to it, you can remotely erase all the contents so that no one can access your information that way. I didn't do any of that, and that was actually one of a few things that led to my downfall when my purse was stolen in Peru. And I'll get to that in a second, but before I do, hopefully if you watch this far, you've been enjoying all the tips and content that I've been providing, please show me some love, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let me know in the comments which tips have been news to you. All right, this video is culminating in a story of a personal experience. The reason I created this entire video is because it is made up of lessons that I did not follow or use when I was in Peru and my purse was stolen and just, don't be me, it was not a good experience. So what happened was I was in Cusco, I was with some friends, I was doing a whole bunch of shopping. I had my purse, it was sitting on my shoulder, and I had a bunch of shopping bags. I got into a taxi, no problem. I got out of the taxi with all the shopping bags and realized only just a hair too late that my purse in the meantime had slipped off my shoulder and over the shopping bags entirely and it was sitting in the footwell of the cab. I realized quickly that I was without my purse. However, so too did the taxi driver who made a way before I could get to him. And in my purse was everything. I had all my cards in my wallet. So I lost all of my cards, debit, credit, ID, everything. I had all of my cash in my wallet. I lost, so I had, didn't have any of that. I had my phone there. I didn't have a pin protection or even a, a find my phone location. So I couldn't find out even where it had gone. And if I were not with friends on that day, I honestly don't know what I would have done because I had no cash, I had no cards, I had no identification. I had nothing. And I was an hour from my accommodation that required a bus ride and a taxi ride to get there. So I, I honestly, I mean, I would have been, I might still be there to this day. I don't know what would have happened, but thank goodness I was, the one thing I did right was I was with friends who could spot me, not only in that moment to get me back to my accommodation, but then they gave me enough money to get by until I could get replacement cards, which in a place like Peru is not a, a simple process. So don't be me. Here are a few additional tips that you can use that will prevent something like this from happening to you, in addition to everything that I've already spoken about on this video. One of which is, women, if you're carrying a purse, wear it crossbody style. My purse would not have fallen off my shoulder if I had it on crossbody, but because it was only hanging on one shoulder, it slipped off and I didn't even notice that the strap had slipped off. So if you wear it crossbody, no problem. You'd have avoided this whole mess that I had. Next up, make sure that you are always in bodily contact with your purse or your bag or whatever valuables you have. Uh, so when I'm walking along with my purse cross body, I usually just very casually have a hand resting on the purse. And it's not like I'm clutching it to my bosom. It's just sitting there. It's just a very natural thing. Or I'll have my hand on the strap. It looks very natural, but it's now been an ingrained habit that I've created that means I'm always in bodily contact with my purse. Uh, if you want to go hands-free, if you, if you think that that's kind of weird and you want to be able to be completely hands-free, but you want to know that it's not ever going to come off your body, you can just use a carabiner and you can put it through the strap and then put that through your belt loop. And then that way, again, it's you, no matter what you do, your purse is not going to fall off entirely because it is being secured, at least in a loose way. Then when you arrive somewhere like a restaurant uh, or a co-working space, Again, make sure that you are always in contact with your bag. So I will never put a bag on the back of my chair. Uh, I'll, I'll also, if I put it at my feet, I will make sure that my leg is always up against it. And usually I'll actually put the strap over my leg. So it's actually fully in contact with me all the time. 
or I will take the strap and I'll wrap it around the table leg and then I'll make sure my foot is resting against it. Just make sure you know where your stuff is all of the time. It's very important and like I said, you can avoid the whole mess that I experienced in Peru by using the tips in this video, including the ones I just shared with you. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope that you're all the wiser and the next trip that you take, you're going to feel confident and secure and you're gonna come home with all your stuff and yourself intact. Please check the description because I've included a whole pile of links in it to additional resources, including all of the products that I showed you here today and so much more. And keep watching at the end of this screen, uh, there's gonna be a couple of extra videos that have been recommended to you uh, that I'm sure you're gonna enjoy. I'm Nora Dunn, I'm otherwise known as the Professional Hobo, and I will catch you next time.